Son, let me tell you something about life, baby. <laughs> you know, my story is unique. There's gonna be some ups and downs, some highs and lows, but I want you to enjoy yourself in this 40 minutes of good times. I'm gonna start out by saying my father, I love him very much. He was an amazing and still is an amazing man. My father raised me by himself, a black man. You don't hear about that too much. It's not celebrated. You don't see billboards of a black man embracing a little half black child. My father did the best that he could do with what he was dealing with. My father was unique in his own way because he had his own things that he was dealing with. My father was a bipolar, paranoid, schizophrenic, aspiring Black Panther movement pimp. <laughs> And, and still is. He's kind of a polite pimp, though. He's not full-blown pimp. Like, he's not slapping people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's polite. Now, when you're a bipolar, paranoid, schizophrenic, aspiring Black Panther movement pimp, you're not going to raise your kids conventional because you don't know what conventional is. He would talk to me about real issues like I was a grown man when I was six years old. Son, let me tell you something about life, baby. <laughs> 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 you don't know what it is, Killer? You don't know what it is. <laughs> if you love a woman, that's the woman you want to be with. Don't stop doing what you did to get her once you got her. <laughs> I said, okay, Dad, I'll write it down with my crayon and my notepad. <laughs> don't stop doing what you did to get her once you got it. I got it, Dad, I got it, I got it. Secondly, son, more importantly, understand this. I made some mistakes. I lost your mother doing things I shouldn't have been doing. If you love a woman, and that's the woman you want to be with, don't mess up your for show chick trying to get another chick, you end up with no chick. <laughs> Cut down, I don't know what you talk about, but I write it down. I'm only six, but I'll try. Don't mess up your for show chick trying to get another chick. You end up with no chick. I guess that's an infidelity joke, Dad, but I don't know what that is, so we'll just <laughs> put it in there. <laughs> and last thing my father told me rings out the most, and it sits with me to this day. And even as a little boy, those things keep circulating. I didn't know the meanings of the words he was saying, but I carried those little things. And last thing my father said to me that means the most and it rings out every single day, is judge no man or woman uncommon. And that's brilliant to me. And he didn't do his little, because <laughs> I think that was important to him. He is by far the most impactful person in my life because through his adversities and through his struggles, he always made sure I was okay. Do you guys understand that? Don't judge, man. Nobody in this room had a choice about being here. Everybody was born from somebody, so how can you criticize or ridicule somebody about their initial existence? My mom is white, my dad is black. Mexican, that's what the hell happened. I didn't have a choice. I didn't have nothing to do with this. Wasn't like I was in my dad's testicles during conception, swimming upstream. No, no, stop. I don't want to little Mexican baby in hola, buenas noches, here I am. I didn't have a choice. You have any idea how confused it is growing up half black and half white? I messed up for life, people. I used to steal stuff and take it back. Sad. It's something about the black side that's so honest. I love telling that joke in front of my white friends, I do. Because they're immediately like, we do not steal, not at all.
Okay, we may have stole one country. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> I'm sorry. True story. <laughs> I embrace it, man. It's, it's what it is. And certain things happen, and there's certain injustices that happen to people. And when the injustices happen to black folks, I'm bothered by it. But I'm, I'm bothered by injustices happen to anybody. Do you guys understand that? But it's something about the fact that these things happen, and I feel a certain way. Do you guys get that? Like, it definitely hurts me because it is a part of who I am. I can't relate and understand what it's like to be a black man because my complexion does not allow me to do that. This shade is not black, but I still feel for the things that are happening and injustices that are happening to black men or women or just people in general. On the other side of that is I can relate to looking Mexican. <laughs> because I've looked like this my whole entire life. And Mexican people get upset. They're irate when they find out that I'm not Latino. <laughs> I was in Los Angeles not too long ago. The Mexican people's out there protesting. Don't say I'm la, la, la. It's like, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> Only Spanish I know is Chalupa, um, <laughs> Street Taco, <laughs> and Hector. That's it, that's all I know. <laughs> I embrace it. It is what it is. You know, I'm tired of going to Home Depot and Lowe's and people offering me jobs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, sir, I will not paint your whole house for $75. Uh, $350. <laughs> That's the brother me trying to negotiate. It's crazy, man. And I embrace it, man. I'm just as much white as I am black. And people ask me all the time, what side do you identify with the most? You know, and it's, it's, it's tough because that's a, that's a question you typically ask a person that's black and white because they're black and white, right? What, what are you, and I think because my mom wasn't present, people will automatically assume that I'm gonna identify with the black side, and I do. I've lived in a culture that is somewhat different, but at the same time, it's not. We're all people, we just do things, eat things a little bit different, eat different food, but we still bleed and live and dream the same. So, it's not about me choosing a side, but I understand that I'm a black man, and a white man, and I'm Mexican. <laughs> you guys get that? It's an illusion. <laughs> because I do white things and I can't help it. It's just there, like it's, it's bred in me. Like my playlist is confusing to all my black friends. I got Tupac, Two Chains, Toto, and Journey on my playlist. Do you understand? Hold the line. That's a great song. <laughs> Black friends like, what the hell is you playing? I said, man, just listen to the lyrics. It's a good song. <laughs> <laughs> I got a window sticker in the top left-hand corner of my windshield that tells me when my oil changes do. I follow the strict guidelines of the manufacturer's recommendations for server intervals to a T. That's white people stuff. Do you understand me? <laughs> But if you give me a loan, I have been known to pay you back in a very elongated time frame <laughs> with my choice of how much money I give you back. <laughs> I got you, I got you. <laughs> I enjoy life, man. It's, it's what it's about. You know, have fun. Embrace it, man. We, we are uptight. It's an uptight time, man. It's got to get away from that. I got a wonderful family, man. I'm married, been with my wife 28 years, you know? Don't clap. 
It's treacherous. <laughs> you be with somebody a long time, you'll find yourself getting irritated by the simplest of things. Like, I love my wife. You can love that person to death, but you're still gonna get bothered by the most minuscule things. Like last Saturday, she in a bedroom, breathing. <laughs> And I'm like, what are you doing right now? <laughs> You're taking up all the air in the room. <laughs> Stop breathing for a minute, let me get some air, okay? <laughs> and I'm not talking about regular breathing. She does this thing where she's like <gasps> <gasps> She takes three breaths to my one breath, and that's unbelievably selfish of her. <laughs> we in this room, we don't got no windows, no ventilation. You over here heavy breathing like we oxygen luxurious. Just <gasps> stop breathing for them and let me get some air. And I love my wife, I love my kids, but I feel like my Saturdays are being taken away from me, from my wife and my children. And my Saturday starts off at three o'clock in the morning. My wife hits me on top of the head. <clears throat> Wake up. What, baby? I'm trying to sleep. I was dreaming, you was dreaming, you was sleeping with somebody. <laughs> what? You heard me. I was dreaming, you was dreaming, you was sleeping with somebody. And I'm like, how does she know? And I want to dream about other things, but I know she'll be watching, right? I can't control my dreams. This is not something I can control. And I'm saying to myself, how selfish can you be to come into my dreams? <laughs> this is the only time I had it myself. Now I got to be on the lookout for your dream blocking butt, right? <laughs> she and my dreams try to hide behind a bush like I don't see her. Lady, I see you, I'm the producer. This is my dream, go away! I'm not, I'm not here. Yes, you are, I see you. <laughs> she gonna get mad the other day. How come you don't ever dream about us being together? Because we be together. <laughs> and that wouldn't be a dream, that'd be a rerun. And none of my dreams are in syndication. They're all pilots with a fresh supporting cast, and she didn't appreciate that at all. <laughs> She's a good girl, though, man. I got three amazing daughters. I got my oldest daughter. My oldest daughter, thank you, I love her to death. She's 22 years old, my firstborn. I don't really have too much to say. She got this boyfriend, I'm not too fond of him. He's short. I didn't realize that I was a heightist. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's ruined all my chances of having a starting forward or a point guard or something because he's like five foot five. My daughter's five foot nine. I was like, you seen him. You knew he was like that, but you still like him. <laughs> he's a good guy, so, you know. Then I got my 13-year-old, Kylie. That's my baby, that's my sweetheart. I'm not gonna say it's my favorite child, but she's close. <laughs> but she's a practicing habitual liar. And <laughs> she's so good at it, I sometimes condone it. Because when people are good at things, you need to encourage them. Because there may be a job for her somewhere, a politician, maybe the president, a Clinton, who knows? You know? And then, there's my nine-year-old, Jayla. I love my daughter very much. She's my baby. But, I have a hard time liking her as a person.
Do you guys understand the difference? Like, I love her very much, but there's a part of me that's like, you would never be my friend in real life. I don't tell her that, but I think about it every time she says something to me out of pocket. She has no fear at all, which I'm, I'm, I love. I love that she's this outspoken individual. She's got confidence. The reason why I don't like her, because she's just like me, and that's the problem, you know? I understand that. And the real reason why I don't like her is because she got an attitude because she spelled better than me. And that's the biggest problem. <laughs> I knew we had an issue because the other day she asked me to spell a word. She obviously knew how to spell. <laughs> Daddy, can you spell peripheral? I was like, ugh, that's a tough one. <laughs> but I'm cocky, so I gave it a try. I was like, P-E-R-I-F. She's like, no, Daddy, that's not it. It's like, why you ask me to spell a word you already know how to spell? You ever have a coworker or a friend ask you a question you know that person knows the answer to? They grown, she nine. How's she supposed to even know this, right? That is spell peripheral. I was upset, upset. <laughs> Live it. Couple minutes go by, you know kids, they don't care no more. They just move on with their life. A few minutes go by, I'm still upset, mad. They asked me to spell a word. I could have Googled it, but I'm just thinking I could help you, but no, you gotta be smarty pants. She gonna say, like, I just forgot about it, like everything's fine. Dad, can we go swimming? I said, yes, let's go swimming. So I took her to the pool and she almost drowned a little bit. <laughs> I didn't save her as fast as I should have. I don't like her a little bit, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I let her take in just enough water to resuscitate her. I was like, breathe, breathe, you're gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine. <laughs> <laughs> she's drying off, she's getting her color back. She's like, daddy, why did you save me? I almost, it was bad. I was like, baby, I was gonna save you, but you was not in my peripheral vision, therefore I could not see you <laughs> taking in them large quantities of water. I'm so sorry. You're fine. <laughs> she got a bad attitude. We walking across the street. She's got an attitude. She's stomping. When I was a little kid, and if I walked too aggressive, I looked some kind of way, my father would beat the brakes off of me. That's how I was raised. Like, you couldn't have too much confidence. It was like, walk slowly and softly and put your head down, you know? <laughs> but she's confident. She's got an attitude. We get to the house. We open the door. My wife is at the top of the stairs. <gasps> I'm like, you really need to stop breathing. She almost died a few minutes ago. <laughs> There's not enough air in this room for all of us. <laughs> Life is, is an amazing adventure, you guys. I think we should never take any moments for granted. And you have children, it's your responsibility to make sure your children are okay and that they're molded into being a good person, but sometimes they slip through the cracks. It is what it is. And I, I say I love my daughter because it, it truly is love, and she's probably gonna be the closest to me because she's giving me the most stress. <laughs> I really wanted to say something else, but for the show, I gotta be a little bit more mature about it. <laughs> So in that pause, just think about it. Just use your mind's eye and figure out what I was really gonna say. <laughs> Cause at the end of the day, if a train was coming and I had to exchange my life for hers, I would not hesitate. But I would pause for just a second. <laughs> Before I tackled her full speed like a linebacker, getting her out of harm's way. That's my baby, man. I'm mindful of things too, because as an adult and as a comic, I say things, and I have to be mindful of what I say, because kids are the most honest creatures on the planet. They'll say exactly what's on their mind, 
and they repeat what they hear. Am I right? You know that. Like, you have to be mindful of what you say. And my daughter, she's just loud. She just says things and she absorbs. She's a sponge for information and topics and things. The other day we at the mall. Walking to the mall, everything's fine. Very rarely do I get her to go with me, but this day she's like, that's God. I was like, okay, good. We at the mall, we're walking. There's a man walking towards us. My daughter looks at me. She looks at the man. She says, Daddy, that man's eyebrow go all the way across the top of his forehead. I was like, shh, man, it's too loud. You don't know that man. You don't know what he's capable of. I just said, Daddy's eyebrow. I said, be quiet. And the dude heard it, and he was upset. He was like, oh my goodness, I cannot believe you say something like that. Your daughter is a direct reflection of who you are, my friend. She only say that because you say something just like that. So bad of you to say that, you son of mother. No. I don't know if you've ever heard an Indian person cuss, but when they cuss, it's all flipped around and they are really upset because normally they're calm people and he was upset. This is not what it needs to be, my friend. I'm just a lonely man walking through here and you create this whole thing because you say something in front of her and now she repeats it. I'm like, sir, please calm down. First of all, your eyebrow do go all the way across that <laughs> wall. And she was merely just making an observation about what she saw. I'm sorry, I apologize. If you don't want people to talk about what's going on, get some tweezers, pluck it out. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> and it reminded me of a conversation I'd had a week before with the credit card customer service representative from a credit card that I have. You ever call credit card customer service and this guy right here answered the phone? Thank you for calling Carl Sturbridge. This is how I help you today. What? <laughs> Thank you for calling Carl Sturbridge. This is how I help you today. This sounds exactly the same way it sounded the first time you said it, sir. I didn't know what you said then. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm sorry. I'm all for equal opportunity employment, but I just can't make out what you're saying. <laughs> for the good of verification, my presented primary card host stored the guardian number. I'm gonna go with social security number. <laughs> but I just typed that into the automator. I don't understand why I need to tell you the same thing I just typed in a few minutes ago. <laughs> Sir, please calm down. Don't tell me to calm down. Don't you hate when somebody tell you to calm down when you're not upset? Don't tell me to calm down. This is my secured visa we talking about. I put money in there so that I could use my secured visa and now my interest rate is higher than it was last month. I'm trying to figure out what was going on. Calm down, sir. You calm down. Prepare the more security verification, my PCD primary card holders, mother's maiden name. Man, I don't even know my mama. <laughs> what my mama got to do with my secure visa right now? <laughs> okay, let me see what is going on. <laughs> Apparently, Mr. Lewis, you not pay your bill on the due date. The do, do, do. The debt, debt, debt. Who are you talking to, first of all? You know how you talk to somebody got an accent, after a while you start to pick up the dialect? I gave it back. Don't tell me I did not pay my bill on the due date, you mother son of a son of a, huh? <laughs> he got upset, don't talk like me, you half black, half white, Mexican looking mother of the chief. <laughs> I said, how do you know what I look like? He said, I work for Google too, mother son of a. <laughs> And I was like, that's why your eyebrow go across the top of your forehead. <laughs> and my daughter was sitting right behind me and heard the whole thing. That's where it came from, man. <laughs> I like cheese. <laughs> you like cheese? It's delicious. I'm not really a Swiss guy, I'm more of a monster and a uh, I like provolone if it's melted properly. And then I like, I, li I'm, I look Mexican, so I like the little spicy jalapeno, you know. <laughs> the 
The world, the world is, is I, when I come here and I, I'm amongst all you, I realize how much laughter brings people together. But I also understand that in some instances we are divided uh, and separated by the media and the news and just stuff that's just information. It's just thrown out there. And I, I challenge everybody not to get caught up with that because at the end of the day, we're, we're, it really boils down to being family. And this administration's been kind of tough, you know, and I'm a veteran of the United States Navy, you guys, so I consider myself to be... Thank you, thank you. And to all my brothers and sisters out there that's serving, I, I salute you. Um, I consider myself to be a patriot in, in every sense of the word. So certain things that happens or, you know, our current president does, I may not agree with. I may not like him as a person, but I respect his position in office. Do you guys understand that? So, we voted him in there, like, it was us. It wasn't no computer, like, you know what I mean? We voted the orange guy in, so now we gotta deal with it. And we're lucky that we have a luxury to criticize and ridicule this president, because in some countries they cut your head off for doing that. Do you guys understand that? But some of the things that he did early on, and, he, and he's still trying to do, bother me. Like for instance, the first thing that he talked about was this fence along the Arizona, California, all the borders, right? His first agenda to build this impenetrable wall to keep the Mexican people out. And he proposed that the, it would be like $15 billion to build this fence. And then he said, the Mexican people will pay for it. That is nonsense. I know Mexican people that don't pay car insurance. <laughs> they are not going to be a part of a $15 billion wall. Do you guys understand that? $15 billion. Can't we just buy Mexico for $15 billion? <laughs> Make it a state, right? George Lopez could be the governor. They already got a state flower, cilantro. <laughs> and you can't stop Mexican people. They're gonna come here, man. They're the most resourceful people on the planet with the least amount of resources. They do the most with the least. You guys understand that? They dug El Chapo out of a maximum security prison with a spatula and a big lighter. <laughs> I'm coming, Hefe, I'm coming. <laughs> I'm coming, Hefe, I'm, I'm coming tonight, I'll be here tomorrow. <laughs> Can't stop messing people, man. And we question their intelligence by building this fence. It's proposed to be 14, 19, I don't know what the mileage is, but it's, the terrain is, is just crazy. And the original fence that was initially 698 miles, it used to bother me. Because you think these people can't figure this out? Right? You think they're not intelligent enough to figure this out? The first fence, 696, 697, 698, I'm free, oh the leg! <laughs> you just walk around. can't stop the Mexican people, man. It's funny. <laughs> I think sometimes I watch news and I see things and like it, it, it irritates me. And I know other people feel the same way. Like I'm not the only person that gets bothered. But I'm also observing and it's supposed to be my responsibility to share funny on ridiculous things. Right? I mean, it's, it's part of what I am. But uh, I challenge you, and each and every one of you, to have that mindset, to just be friends and meet new people, and don't be swayed by someone's general stereotype or what somebody is supposed to be or whatever. You guys know what I mean? And, and, and <laughs> if you're in a relationship and you love the woman or man you're with, let them know. 
Don't harbor the relationship for convenience. It's too much of that. Let them be with somebody else. Let them be loved by somebody else. Let them be miserable with somebody else. But sometimes we get selfish in that sense that that's the world we live in. We get locked in that convenience. Be spontaneous in your relationships, too. You know, Valentine's Day just passed not too long ago. Ladies, you like the flowers and chocolates? Yeah. It's okay. Really what you want to know is your man's been thinking about you throughout the course of the day. Maybe he text messaged you or send you something nice. Fellas, you don't got to spend money on flowers and chocolates. Do what I do. Come home from work and knock the door off the hinges. <clears throat> and you look at your woman with a gaze in your eyes like you ain't ate in a week and she's a pork chop, right? <laughs> And you go to her, and you pick her up, if you can. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself trying to do something you cannot do. <laughs> Maybe you're not as strong and virile as you used to be. Maybe she's not as light and petite as she used to be. And whatever you do, don't make that sound like, hey! You push too hard, you be like, hey. and that's awkward too, you strain it. Your core is not together. You do have an option to walk her to the back room. And once you get back there, you make hot, passionate love to her all night long. Over five minutes, whichever come first. Because sometimes we're like, dun, 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 dun. And sometimes we're like, done. It don't work out. It don't work out. <laughs> you know, I, I, dating's important. But I, I challenge all my ladies, like, don't assume that we don't love you because we don't tell you verbally. We have our own little subtle ways of showing you. We do it through expression. When you walk by the living room and you got your little cute outfit on and we tap it on your butt cheeks, that's I love you, fellas. Help me out. That's I love you, ladies. That's how we do it. We have our little gestures, our little funny ways. We make sounds. <laughs> we do dumb stuff. That's men. That's love, though. You never know. Ah, it's love. I was on this nice little romantic trip. My wife. We drive into San Francisco. Ambiance is set. Got the picnic basket, right? I love you. I love you too. I get this little itch in my nose. Got a little boogie, right? <laughs> but I don't want to pick it because I know it'll mess up the ambiance of the date. But it was bad. <laughs> it was one of them ones that'd be like, Shh. You guys know what I'm talking about. You've been whistling me all night. It was bad. My eyes were watering everything. It was real bad. But I want to pick it because she'd be like, you're so nasty. You're so nasty. But I had to do something because it was killing me. So I blew. I was like. Phew. But the booger had a tailwind. Flew around, land on her cheek. True story. <laughs> she driving. She don't know it's on her cheek because it's body temperature. <laughs> this is so nice. I've been doing this for so long, and I'm looking at her like, <laughs> what's wrong? I don't feel good. <laughs> Just drive. What's wrong with you? This is, I don't know. It's so way to see. Just drive. Don't look at me ever. <laughs> but I was not going to tell her because I was never going to get no loving ever, right? We get to the toll booth. The dude at the toll booth is looking at her like. Lady, you realize you got a bull on your cheek? 
But he don't want to say that because I'm like, shut the hell up, shut the hell up. So I did the only thing I knew I could do. I leaned in, gave her a kiss, and ate the booger. That's all I love you, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take one for the team. Tastes like crunchy butter. <laughs> Enjoy <your> nachos. <laughs> That's love. Because I was not going to tell her, because I was never going to get no love in ever, right? <laughs> it's amazing, man. So many things influence people, man. I don't know. I, I think about it, too, because I, I, I try to embrace everybody. Like, no person goes unnoticed. I don't want to be judgmental of any one person like I talked about in the beginning. Like, I love people, and I wish that everybody could adhere to that. Be enthusiastic, be upbeat, you know? Don't have this negative vibe, because it carries with you and the people that are around you. Say hi to a stranger, and I think a lot of you folks know that. But if you don't know, and you know somebody that's not doing it, push it on them. We are here, we ain't going nowhere. We're all family at the end of the day. Shades are shades, but people are people. We bleed and think and dream alike. You guys understand that? I think my dad prepared me at a very young age for this very moment when he said to judge no man or woman uncommon. And that's important. And I challenge y'all to do that. I've been Key Lewis. Peace.